Ever since the 2020 election ended, many Republicans have been frantically searching for voter fraud. I mean, you had uh, recounts and, and audits, and even uh, hell, uh, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick offered up up to $1 million in a reward to be paid out from his own campaign to incentivize, encourage, and reward people to come forward and report voter fraud. So you would think, oh, wow, oh, look at that. Uh, we've got this reward. Uh, all an American patriot has to do is to come out and say, we, we, have, we have found the voter fraud. Here it is. I mean, if there is mass voter fraud, like the Republicans are saying, then it should be relatively easy to, easy to find, right? Well, it turns out we found it. We found the fraud, everybody. It just so happens the fraud is coming from Trump voters, <laughs> as always. Uh, all right, so, oops. Now, as Vice explains, the first person to claim uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor Patrick's reward is actually uh, Eric Frank. So Eric Frank is a progressive poll worker in Pennsylvania. He found a Republican that voted twice. Oops. So now Patrick's campaign actually ended up paying Frank about $25,000 for his tip leading to the conviction of Ralph Thurman. Ralph Thurman is a 72-year-old Republican who voted twice. Thurman, whose lawyers initially claimed he'd been tricked by poll workers into voting a second time, later admitted he had illegally voted a second time using his son's name. Oops. Thurman was sentenced to three years of probation and is banned from voting until the next election. Oh, the irony. Gee. Gee, banned from voting for four years? Hmm. That means he'll be ready to vote in 2024. For the next Republican, doctor, uh, feels like they could have done a little bit more for that, you know, to, to really discourage people from doing uh, the so-called mass voter fraud. But anyway, all right. So now, uh, Frank told the Dallas Morning News on Thursday, quote, it's my belief that they were trying to get cases of Democrats doing voter fraud, and that just wasn't the case. This just kind of blew up in their face. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, womp womp. Oops. All right. So now Patrick campaign spokesperson Alan Blakemore did tell Frank that he was so far the first and only person to seek out the reward. And what happened to the mass voter fraud? Where, where is it? Where's the, where's the mass voter fraud? I thought they would be reporting all sorts of mass fraud, especially in Texas and for reward money. What happened? What happened? Oh, right. Doesn't exist. Now, here's the other thing, right? The reward was for a million dollars. Why did Frank only get paid 25000 Why did he? Why did he get cheaped out on? Seriously? Well, Blakemore said that the reward was uh, substantially less because the campaign was looking to, quote, to catch, quote, unquote, bigger fish. Like... Like what, for example? Hmm. Uh, now, Frank told the Morning News, uh, was he looking for a celebrity or political group as a whole? I don't know what he meant by bigger fish. Hmm. You know what they were after. Again, they were trying to find a Democratic elect, uh, you know, aligned group. Like, for example, I don't know, uh, the defunct acorn for example, that was shut down by Democrats, even though they did absolutely nothing wrong. They were looking for something like that. They were looking for a Project Veritas type, you know, uh, sting that was not really a sting at all, is just heavily edited nonsense. But that's what they were looking for. And they couldn't find it because it didn't exist. Not only that, but it sounds like a likely excuse not to pay up. But that's not all. Oh no, there is more. There is much more. In fact, a Las Vegas man named Donald Kirk Hartle is also facing charges for voting on behalf of his dead wife and then lying about it. Now, the charges come after an investigation from the Secretary of State's office, which investigators, uh, which I'm sorry, investigates any voter fraud allegations in connection with the Nevada Attorney General's office. His wife, Rosemary Hartle, tragically died in 2017, uh, yet a ballot for her was issued in October and later received by the county. Huh. 
Uh, uh, what happened? We should we should look into this. We should investigate. Hmm. Well, uh, it turns out that uh, yes, that ballot got sent out, got returned, and it was a vote for Trump. Both of them were votes for Trump. So now the I team. This is uh, from CBS uh, Eight News Now. Their investigative team looked into this as well, and even interviewed Kirk last year. He said. Oh, the ballot never come to my house. I, I don't know what happened. Now, the I team also found that Rosemarie, even though she had died, her uh, name appeared to be on the active voter list. In, in fact, Rosemarie's signature even matched what Clark County officials had on record. And the vote was counted. Oh, no, we've got, we've got fraud. It's the fraud. So now, of course, they were both registered Republicans. They both, uh, uh, you know, both votes went for Trump. Uh, so when this got flagged, of course, uh, Kirk was very, very upset. In fact, I want to show you that interview that happened. Uh, this was, again, conducted by uh, CBS 8 News Now's David Charns. And uh, why don't we take a look? That is pretty sickening to me, to be honest with you. It certainly brings up a lot of discomfort. Um, you know, there's a, there's a pretty exhaustive process that you go through when someone passes. So have you started to think about how the possibilities here, if, if it was taken in the mail, if it was taken from your mailbox, have you started to, to think about that? I've wondered about how that could have happened. Uh, do, you have, do you have any speculation? No, <laughs> I don't. Mm, no wonder you don't. No speculation at all. Notice a little laugh at the end there. Oh, <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't have any kind of speculation. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, that's because you knew, you lying sack of shit. I mean, come on. No, he added this. He said, I was in dis it was disbelief. It made no sense to me, but it lent some credence into what you've been hearing in the media about these possibilities, and now it makes me wonder how pervasive this is mm, the fraud. So, so much, uh, so much fraud. I, I wonder how pervasive. I mean, if it happened to me, it could happen to other people. Now, this guy, the irony, of course, is that he was spreading a lie. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, he was spreading the big lie about voter fraud by doing the voter fraud. Amazing, amazing. Th these people want it so desperately for this to be true. But they know that it's not. Deep in their heart of hearts, these people know. These people know without a shadow of a doubt, there is no mass voter fraud. They know. They know. But they, they, they're so personally invested in it, politically invested in this, that they go and they, they say, well, if I can't find it happening, I'll just do it myself. And then I'll prove that there's mass voter fraud by doing voter fraud. It's such a weird, twisted type, you know, type of logic. Now, Rosemarie Hartle's ballot was also one of two cited by Nevada Republicans as evidence of voter fraud. In fact, I want to show you a tweet here. Uh, this is from the Nevada GOP. Let me bring that up. So, yeah, that's the Nevada GOP uh, talking about how, oh, this is disbelief and sickening. That's how Kirk Hartle feels about somebody voting in this deceased wife's name. How did this... Ford signature passed Clark County, Nevada's signature verification machine, and it's not the only case of a deceased, uh, deceased person voting in Nevada. Yes, yeah, the Republican Party, all over that. All over that. And then, you also have this. Kirk was surprised to find that his life wife was Republican cast about in 17, uh, in this year's election, despite having passed away in 17. The media needs to understand we are finding concrete cases of voter irregularities that they must expose. Well, there you go. Exposed. Totally exposed that you are the ones doing voter fraud. Jesus. Now, look, um, a state ballot review earlier this year in Nevada had actually found about 10 possibly deceased voters had ballots cast in their names. 10. That's a report from the Office of Vital Statistics. 
Now, 10, 10 out of how many millions of ballots? Again, out of the millions of ballots cast in the 2020 elections, overall, and this is from different studies, about 200 possible cases of fraud were found. That's it. And from a lot of the stories that I've seen, it, it's, not, it's not the left that's doing it. It's Trump supporters. It's MAGA people. It's people that are literally doing the thing that they're projecting onto the left. They're, they're voting in dead people's names. They're voting, you know, uh, in, 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 they're, they're voting twice in some cases and then admitting it. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. This is why I keep saying the right hates democracy. They do not want free and fair elections. What they want to do is they want to rig the system and they want to do voter fraud and then project that desire, of course, onto their opponents. That's why their allegations are an absolute joke. Now, of course, it would be funny if it didn't have such dangerous repercussions for our country. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.